So I've been wanting to upgrade my desktop for nine months now and after watching countless build guides and reading tons of articles in math class, I decided it was finally time to build my new video editing and 3D animation PC. This is my current system. I've got a late 2012 Mac Mini with a Core i5-3210M and an Intel HD 4000 for graphics, along with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and a one terabyte Samsung 860 Evo. Super outdated, I know, but this is what I use to create my whole Subnautica fan film on. So my workflow hugely consists of heavily multi-threaded workloads, so I do lots of CPU rendering inside of Cinema 4D, as well as video editing work in Premiere and After Effects. I had a budget of 1.3 grand, so I needed to find the best balance of price and performance that would best suit my needs. So enough talking, let's run through the parts. For my CPU, I went with the AMD Ryzen 2700X, as the eight cores would provide rendering and encoding performance, as well as allow me to multitask better. Now I know what you guys are thinking, why not go with 3rd gen Ryzen? Well, I got the 2700X for $199, which I actually found out was a pricing error, but they were nice enough to let me keep it. And with Gen 4 rumored to launch next year, I thought I might upgrade to that at a later date, or upgrade to the 3700X when prices drop. So for my graphics card, I decided to go with the Inno 3D RTX 2060 Super, which I managed to pick up for just $495 on Black Friday. Now I know the 5700 and 5700 XT are the best performers at this price point. However, most GPU renderers such as Octane and Redshift only support NVIDIA GPUs at this moment. And with optic support within V-Ray and Blender Cycles, NVIDIA was a clear option for my workflow. So for my motherboard, I went with the ASUS B450M-A, which at $115 is a great entry-level motherboard that comes with four RAM slots, support for M.2 NVMe SSDs, lots of USB 3.0 ports, and also gives me the option to upgrade to any AM4 chip down the line. Controversial statement, but a bit of RGB makes things look sexy. I went with the Corsair RGB Vengeance Pro 16GB kit at 3200MHz, which I picked up for $139. So for my SSD, I went with the Silicon Power M.2 NVMe 2280, which was $177, advertised read-write speeds of up to 3,400 megabytes and 3,000 megabytes respectively. For my power supply, I decided to go with the Cooler Master MasterWatt 650, which is a bronze rated modular power supply. And at just $89, this seemed like a great entry level option from a well-known brand. So I went with the cheap $30 Cool Moon RGB fan set from eBay, only downside is I can't actually control the fan curves because it runs through its own fan hub rather than through the motherboard. For my CPU cooler, I went with the Cooler Master Master Air 620P, which comes with two 120mm fans as well as dual heatsink towers to ensure maximum cooling performance. Finally, for my case, I went with the Cooler Master Masterbox MB520 Tempered Glass Edition, which is a mid-tower sized case with lots of room for cable management, component clearance, a power supply shroud, as well as aggressive front intakes on the dark mirror front panel to ensure maximum airflow. Alright, well I've just run through all of the parts, I'm going to shut up now and you guys can enjoy some videos of the build process. Keep in mind, this is my first build and if I'm doing anything wrong, you guys can let me know down in the comments.
All right, so for those of you who have made it this far and haven't fallen asleep yet, here are some benchmarks comparing my new build to my old Mac Mini. First up, some CPU testing in Geekbench, where the single core performance of the Mac isn't too bad, but those eight cores of the Ryzen result in more than double performance gain in multi-core. Now onto Cinebench R20, where we see improvements in single core, but more than three times the multi-core performance. In the Blender BMW benchmark, we can see the PC finishing in a sixth of the time, and the same goes in Classroom, where we can see drastically improved rendering speeds. In Corona, the PC finishes in a third of the time, Moving on to graphics now, we can see in Unigen Heaven and Valley, the RTX 2060 Super absolutely destroying the old Intel HD 4000. Now for some content creation with Premiere Pro's Warp Stabilizer, as well as After Effects 3D camera tracking, and finally encoding a 3 minute 4K clip to 1080p high quality. So building my own PC has been an amazing experience. It really is like Lego, albeit slightly more complex and a little bit more expensive. However, I'm really looking forward to the improved efficiency and better looking renders that I'll be getting out of this system. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to comment down below what you guys thought of the video. If you enjoyed it, hey, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike, that's completely fine. And be sure to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of the epic new content coming out soon. Take care.